Greetings everyone, I hope you're having a super fantastic day wherever you are. Welcome back to the channel and welcome if it's your first time here. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the Counterpoint XL from Cold Steel. I'm simply gonna unbox it, spin it around the block once or twice, cut a little bit of paper, just check the initial sharpness. I'm gonna talk about all the modifications that I will be doing to this knife in future videos. I will be taking this knife into the woods in a future video. If you're new to my channel, please consider checking out the playlists. I've got three of them. I do more than tabletop reviews. Nothing wrong with tabletop reviews, but I like to do a little bit more. Also, down in the description, you're going to find my Amazon Influencer page. I've created a gear, a tool, a food, and a clothing tab. In there, you will find a big chunk of the things that I have on this channel. Having said that, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. It will help this channel. Now, on with the video. I can't stand intros. Okay, so let's take a look at the Counterpoint XL from Cold Steel. I'm kind of coming late to the party on this one, but I will add it to my Monster Knife collection. I'll put the link to that video right up here. It's like one of the first videos I've done on my channel. It was quite a while ago. Let's open up this box. Now, of course, this is not a true unboxing. I've handled this already, just so I can get an idea of what this thing is all about and how it feels. I can tell you right now, it feels awesome. And the reason why I say that is because it's not really too janky. In other words, there's not a lot of hot spots so it, initial impressions, it does feel pretty good. Okay, so one of the modifications I'm going to do, I'm just going to talk about those right off the bat, is I'm going to do two things to the pocket clip. I'm going to soften it so it's not so stiff. And I'm also going to give it a satin finish so it matches this portion of the blade. So it's not so blingy. I've done that to many cold steels already. All right, so the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the thumb studs and I'm probably going to put in a snaggle tooth. I'm not going to open the blade yet because I still want to talk about some of the things I'm going to do. The third thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off all the edges. So all the sharp edges on the Grivex, I'm going to remove. I'll put a chamfer all the way around wherever the handle is in contact with the hand. Obviously, I'm not going to do that in areas like this or this, or this. I'll basically start the chamfer from here all the way through, just so that when you're holding it, it is a lot more comfortable. Also, before I open it up, the other modification I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it some jimping. That's right, think Talwar or think Colossus. Now, why I say Colossus is because on the Colossus, the jimping is in the actual lock itself on the on the bar it's not actually in the g10 in this case it's grivex but i think you know what i mean the reason for it that i might not be able to do that on this one is that the grivex wraps around a steel liner now if i was to, there it is right there let's come in on that what you're looking at is typical so i only have maybe a sixteenth of an inch a couple of millimeters perhaps of plastic. So if I grind down too far, I'm going to be into steel right back here. So I may just do it only on the lock bar itself, which would be exactly like the Colossus. Okay, so another modification I'm going to do like I said, I'm going to soften this edge. I'm going to consider removing this or a portion of it, but that one is going to be sketchy only because of the stainless steel liner. All right, so the other thing I'm going to do is see if I can show you. Notice how the lock bar doesn't sit flush. Like if I push down really hard, it will seat a little bit better. I've had this problem with the cold four as well, and I did fix it. So, and the other thing I'm gonna do is soften the spring. Right now, it is not bad. I think I've showed you 
a couple of different methods on how to do that in previous videos. I tried method one and it has made a huge difference. And I will talk about that when I do that mod video. Also, in the lock itself, I'll try to make it so that it doesn't have to go so far right there. It might just relieve it just a fraction, just to make it a little bit softer. Because right now, you know, it's a little bit of a burn. You can see that. But... Uh, it's also very common for me to take a little bit of a chamfer off in here as well, just so it's not so bitey. My initial impressions of this knife are, it's, it's actually awesome. And I'm going to show you so much more coming up in future videos of little discoveries I've already made, especially with the other monsters in my collection. But I'm going to save that for another video. So let's take a quick look at this blade. This is Aus 10A, or AUS 10A. Let's bring you in on that. We've got the brand new Cold Steel logo. Notice on this channel, I have not mentioned anything about the new Cold Steel in any way, shape, or form, except for right now and the logo. And you won't hear anything else after that. Also, let's take a quick look. Oops, sorry, little Jerry. That's I've done this to you a couple of times. All right, so... The one thing I've noticed right now that kind of bothers me, and of course, this is just the way I am. If you follow this line to that line, I'm trying to find a way to show it to you without stabbing myself. It's going to be very difficult to do. You're just going to have to use your eye. You see how it kind of curves downward right about here? Yeah, that kind of bothers me. And some of you are saying, well, for the price you paid for that, it's not that big of a deal. And here again, it's not even, it's, it's lower here than it is here. Now, because I'm a knife maker, my eyes are going towards that kind of stuff. I don't think I'm going to try fixing that. I'm just going to leave that alone. It's not the end of the world. And also the edge grind, it's a little bit thicker there than it is on that side. Well, let's try and zoom that in, maybe get a little bit closer. These are things that I spot. Now, this is not a, um, a diss on cold steel. This happens to some of the most expensive knives out there. They just can't seem to get the uh, edge geometry consistent. And, uh, but I will say, they did give us a nice sharpening choil here. So overall, not bad. Let's bring over a little bit of paper. Let's see how sharp this thing. I have not cut anything with it. Let's move little Jerry out of the way. Don't want to hurt him. Let's just try this out. It's not bad. I'd probably give it about an eight. Yeah, maybe an eight and a half. It's not that bad. Not that bad at all. Well done, Cold Steel. Not bad. Pretty darn good, actually. I have not stropped it. I've not done anything to it. Okay, so my overall impressions. I like it. I think it's got a lot of potential. I think it's got more potential than some of the other knives that I have. It's going to take a little bit of time. Going to just soften off these edges a little bit. You can see I'm going to... It's kind of bitey in there. But you're going to be blown away when, when I do the... Uh, reach the overall reach in comparison to some of the other ones you're going to be completely amazed this thing is pretty cool let's save some of that information for future videos i hope you enjoyed this video please consider liking sharing and subscribing and until next time have a great day